Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover the electrical system and do some testing of the kitchen appliances. See how that works out today. So I thought I'd try to make some lunch here at the, uh, at the park. That's kind of a nice place. And test out the ability to uh, make a quick meal with the uh, setup we've got. So if I pull out the drawers, I know we've got uh, a lot of canned goods in here. Canola oil, soap, coffee, bowl, frying pan, hot dogs, some soup in the back. Over here we've got uh, walnuts, oats, rice, crackers, might use crackers, ramen, chili, some wine, got some uh, soy sauce and sugar, making some coffee. So quite a few supplies. So the idea was what it, what it would be like to uh, try this out. So we got half a can of soup here. We'll go ahead and turn this thing on. We'll see how long it takes to actually uh, warm this thing up. Um, I'll just put this over here for now in the sink. So stir it up a little bit. lid on to keep it warm in there Let's see how it goes so i thought i'd better talk a few minutes about why i use an induction stove instead of the hot plate or microwave if you look at some information on the efficiency of an induction cooktop it's uh, upwards of 90 percent 84 to 90 percent efficient versus 55 to 74 percent efficient for the standard uh, hot plate or electric cooktop and if you look at using a microwave, it's even worse. It can be as low as 50% efficiency for a microwave oven as well. So the bottom line is you want to use uh, a really e efficient uh, stove if you can to save your battery power. Uh, paper towel folders up here. I put it in a plastic bag to keep it from unrolling. You can also keep it clean. And uh, some washcloths. I found these little hooks at the uh, dollar store that snap on to the rod, so I'm hanging a bag for garbage. Okay, a little over uh, two, two and a half minutes, and uh, we're boiling away, so not too bad. So pretty quick lunch. Well, unfortunately, I can't eat and uh, film at the same time, but it uh, looks like within two to three minutes, it was warm enough, actually pretty hot and boiling to be able to eat. And it's nice and warm on this uh, cold winter day. Okay, it's time to wash up, <clears throat> put the dirty dishes in the sink, got some soap here hanging off the rag, turn on the uh, water. Probably enough, and start washing dishes. So after a nice bowl of soup, let's make some uh, hot water. I'll make a cup of hot water here real quick. I'll just pour this in. I'm not going to make a lot because I'm really just demoing whether this thing was working. So we got that going. So this is a little small extra coffee so I can make actual real coffee instead of some kind of instant. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on and we'll see how long it takes to uh, actually make some decent coffee here. So I'll uh, let this run for a few minutes and we'll, I'll come back and tell you how long it takes to uh, boil that water. Okay, so within a few minutes, it's already finished with uh, a reasonable amount of uh, hot water. So for one person, that's, again, uh, not very much time to get actual real hot water or real coffee. So I could have powered the appliances by pulling off the inverter directly. But the problem is that when the car is off, the 12-volt uh, starter battery could potentially get drained since it would still be connected to it. Instead, I went to the 12-volt uh, uh, internal plugs, which turn off after about 15 minutes, hooked into a power bank instead. And the power bank then can handle uh, high loads at the same time. This way, you're not pulling a lot of power from the inverter, uh, possibly uh, damaging it. And also, it uh, saves the starter battery as well. So I currently have the 110-volt power coming off of a EcoFlow River 2 uh, small unit that's then being uh, supplied by the car uh, to keep it topped off all the time. That way I, I don't have to do any rewiring and I can set the charging current low enough to that the uh, 
12 volt uh, supply can can handle it without uh, putting any stress on the EME. And I'm really worried about doing that because uh, it's just not worth risking a uh, you know 11 to 12 thousand dollar repair bill if the EME is damaged in any way. So it's kind of a buffer between those two. Also, uh, I can use it to run the uh, 12 volt refrigerator, which is right here, and then talk about that in a later episode. Again, it will run whether the car is on or off independently, and can use it to, and also use it to uh, run electric blanket overnight in uh, camping mode. Uh, what I haven't decided yet is whether to leave it where it's at right now or put it underneath of the rear seat because I think there is actually room to put it in there. I would have to leave it on all the time and uh, plug it in. What's really uh, slick about this unit is that uh, it does have Bluetooth remote access uh, by the phone so you can turn on and off both the 12 volt and the 110 volt supply so you can disable it if necessary. So right now I just have the uh, power cable which is an extension cord that is uh, velcroed onto the edge here so I can leave it if necessary um, if I convert it back into normal mode and remove the uh, camping deck off the back here. Um, otherwise just uh, the coffee maker or the uh, induction stove can be used. Again this is a, a 600 watt max uh, induction stove used in uh, restaurant supply. Uh, that can go clear down to 100 watts. So the advantage of this is it can run off of a really small uh, 100, 110 volt inverter without much of a problem, uh, which is what we're gonna do today. So thanks for watching. If you like this content, please uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned for part four where we go over the uh, small refrigerator for the micro camper.